Police Blotter Theater. Oh, I dropped my cell phone into a bathtub full of Thousand Islands dressing. Who left that here? Barry. F and Barry. Oh, my phone ruined by the Thousand Islands dressing. Man, I hope I can purchase a replacement from a trustworthy stranger that I meet anonymously. Oh, uh, yeah, here, uh, see, I, I got an actual cell phone for sale that's not locked, so uh, check it out. Bring cash and come alone. What a nice personal touch. Good evening, and welcome to Police Blotter Theater. I am Adjutant Smythworthy. Tonight we take you to the vibrant location that is the 1400 block of North Elm Street in Denton, Texas. Oh, it's very dark here. I love shopping in the dark. Bobby had arranged to meet someone to buy a cell phone. All right, check it out. Here's a phone you inquired about. Uh, there has been some mistake. Mm, yeah, you made it. Uh, come in here. No, this phone is locked. What was your name again? Yo, why don't you shut your stupid effing mouth, you butt turd eaten emmer effer? What, what, what is that, French? No, I'm Bobby. Okay, two things. What other kinds of turds are there? And two, this phone is locked. I will not buy it. When the victim refused to buy the phone, Laredo, a.k.a. Shut up your stupid effing mouth, you butt turd eaten emmer effer, pulled out a silver handgun. See, I think you are. What a pretty silver handgun. Yeah, thank you, man. Could you point it somewhere else? Not really, no. Give me money. But the phone won't work for me. I know, but I like money, and I want to have yours. And see. Hello. Welcome to Far Out Fiesta Episode 12. Do you like being a repulsive barbarian coming to you live from On Air Live? And that was not redundant. Or later, if you launched it from the link. Hey, let's give a big shout out to our amazing... Far out Fiesta cast. Let's start with uh, Cassidy Kennedy. Yeah! Rob Hudspeth. <laughs> Did you? Typical. Are you, are, are you still here, Rob? Uh, not for much longer, I guess. <laughs> and my name is Richard Houghton, and please give it up for our special guest star, April Hart. Yay! Yay! Is that bad that I cheered the loudest for myself? We Never. kind of expected that, Never. so it's, you know. Yeah. Ooh, that was, really... that was okay. a shocker. <laughs> Shocking. A fake, fake commercial, commercial for a waffle, waffle copter. Are you tired of boring breakfasts? Mommy, this cereal is boring. Well, what do you want for breakfast? A bowl of chopped up clowns? Would they be sugar-coated? Clown blood doesn't mix with sugar, sweetie. It's acrid. What if you had a hot breakfast that flew through the air? I guess that would be okay. <laughs> She's so ungrateful. Fine. Tell me about your flying breakfast, Mr. Butt-Bite announcer. Oh. I apologize for her behavior, Mr. Probably Not But Bite Announcer. Her father is never around. Waffle Copter, a drone based breakfast delivery system. You mean like a helicopter made out of waffles? Yes, like a helicopter made out of waffles? <laughs> Idiot. No, Waffle Copter comes in regular cinnamon toast and blueberry fandango. Ooh, I'll have a blueberry fandango. They're only for children. What if I dress like a child? I'll answer that question privately uh, off the air. How does it <laughs> taste? Kind of like copper. Flavor wires. Uh, a Susie. I'll give you $20 for a bite of that waffle. Waffle copter, a totally unnecessary component to a potentially balanced breakfast. I'll let you drive the car, you ungrateful little whore. Practical, practical Kung, Kung Fu. Fu. On the last Practical Kung Fu, Lewis was having a birthday party. He doesn't know he is serving them ant paste instead of anti antipasto. His girlfriend is at the door. Lewis opens the door. It is his former undercover detective, Dina Mockingbird. Okay, bud, this is my girlfriend. I'm not your girlfriend. This is my lover. Fat effing chance. 
I'd croak first. This is a nice lady who took pity on me. Yeah, I can live with that. What? Uh, the, 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 the detective? Spit! Man, hide the weed! Uh, may, may I put the weed in your butt? What is wrong with you? I, I, I think she almost busted me once. Detective Mockingbird pulls handcuffs out of her purse and tosses them to Bud. I totally wouldn't have remembered if you didn't freak. I warned him about freaking. Yeah, men never listen. Freaks. Like reasoning with shrimp. She looks at Bud. Cuff yourself. Bud complies. Would you like a pair too, Kay? Sure. Kay takes the second pair of cuffs, kisses them, and places them in her purse. Uh, by the way, Louis, I'm not a detective anymore. What the hell, man? Oh, don't be such a handcuffed baby. She cuffs him to his chair and spins him around to face away from the rest of the party guests. I tell you to think about what you've done, but... Yeah, not gonna happen. Bud quietly sings an improvised bumblebee song. How did you get mixed up with these two knuckleheads? Former Detective Mockingbird? Yeah, you can call me Linda, but only you. Hold on a sec. Holding on, Linda. She pulls out her revolver and knocks Bud unconscious. In the kitchen, Lewis adds finishing ant paste touches to the meal he prepares. Who doesn't love antipasto? He slides all of the food into his brown paper serving bag. Lewis returns from the kitchen with the food. Bud struggles to regain consciousness. Kay and Detective Mockingbird pass a pipe. Detectives have the best weed, Linda. Yeah, I confiscated this. Still have my badge. And that was a great story about how you humiliated the mayor and lost your job. Yeah, too bad Bud wasn't in here to hit. You pistol whipped me unconscious. Yeah, cry about it on your own time. I will. <laughs> Who wants antipasto? We, we want, want antipasto. Louis hands the food bag to Detective Mockingbird. Take some and pass it on. Detective Mockingbird complies. She passes the food bag to Kay. Hmm. Antipasto. It's such a peculiar word. The food bag continues to be passed around and makes its way to Lewis. It is empty. Antipasto literally means before the meal. But in this case, it means all you get. By the way, thanks for hogging it all. But Detective Mockingbird and Kay feast. <laughs> You know the old saying, starve the birthday boy. <laughs> and it's funny as spit. And this is so delicious, Lewis. How would you describe it? Found food cooking. I don't like the sound of that. I, I, I bet you won't like the sound of this either. Bud drops to all fours and dry heat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's disgusting. I don't feel great either. Kay lies on her back and rolls around on the floor groaning. <sighs> What the hell is in this? She runs to the kitchen and grabs the ant paste. Ant, ant paste? paste? If I don't die, I'm going to kill you. If I don't die, I'm going to sue you. If they die, I get their stuff. Linda Mockingbird doubles over in pain. Oh. This party's a drag. Dude, it's your party. Oh, then I should know. Out! Lewis storms out. The party guests roll on the floor, holding their stomachs and moaning. Lewis storms back in. Uh, one more thing before I go. He picks up the phone. Dude, we haven't paid the bill for that thing in years. He grabs Kay's cell phone. I'm calling a doctor. Hello, Mrs. Fields. You're still not a doctor, right? I'd like to order a birthday cake for one. Special delivery. What the hell? Uh, the doctor I'm talking to on the phone says you're too sick to eat birthday cake and you should probably lie down in the closest cot. Linda Mockingbird <laughs> makes her way to Bud's cot. Uh, no, not that one. Linda Mockingbird finds Lewis's cot. <laughs> uh, okay, the doctor says you should do the same. She finds Lewis's cot too. I, I, I can hear the doctor on the phone, Kay. He says you should lie down on my cot. Uh, the doctor did. Oh, right. <laughs> Nighttime. Kay is in Bud's cot looking horrible. Linda Mockingbird is in Lewis's cot looking horrible. All in all, pretty good birthday. Kung Fu, Lewis! Kung Fu, Bud!
Bait. Bait. What a beautiful day for a scooter trip. Be careful, little squirrel. I'd hate to crush your little rodent skull with my lightweight Italian scooter. <coughs> oh, what a bad time to have crashed on my Vespa. Now I'll never be at State University in time to open mouth kiss with Brenda before she goes off to college and spreads my late 50s version of herpes. Sad to have my foot caught under a rock in the middle of a stream. I'll just lie here in shock as I stare at my bone poking through my skin. Ah, my little friend, the squirrel. Have you come to play with me? You're gnawing on my exposed bone. Nice you to squish your rodent derriere. I'll just black out here and hope no parasites of any kind get into my badly exposed wound. Shade collapses. I wonder for how long I was unconscious. I feel the need to graze on algae. Something about this algae reminds me of Brenda's late 1950s version of herpes. I seem to have molted and developed seven pairs of abdominal gills. The three long tails at the end of my body are peculiar. Get away from me! Why is that fisherman trying to use me for bait? Meanwhile, on the lake... Danny, you know I don't open mouth kiss before the 70th date. Aw, come on, gal. It's date number 54. Only polite, closed mouth kissing for 16 more dates. Aw, fudge blossoms. I may as well just fish. I'll catch me a, a mess of catfish with this badly injured mutant dude who looks like he's partway through some kind of metamorphosis between man and mayfly as bait. You know, sometimes I use stink bait to catch the big cats. Danny, he's turning into a really big, uh, fly. What's he doing? Well, he's not open mouth kissing. Okay, no, that's just weird. My voice has changed. Hey, you, get your vestigial mouth parts off of my best girl. Gail screams as she's chopped in half. I used my vestigial mouth parts to chop her in half. My forewings are much larger than my hind wings, but I'm already comfortable with the fact that I have wings now. My eyes are large, and all of my legs except my front ones are useless. Good lord! I'm a huge mayfly. I wonder if there are any, any mayfly women around I can open mouth kiss. Oh crap, I'm dying. Mayflowers only live about 24 hours. Oh, glad I didn't have to fight that guy. What a shame about Gail. I wonder if Brenda is home. Beware, parents. Open mouth kissing leads to ghastly mutations and horrible deaths. Taste, taste lady, lady and, and smell boy, boy and, and I'll, I'll be, be damned. damned. Gosh, taste lady. I never thought Dr. and Mrs. Dracula would insert our index fingers into Baxter Dam, making us the only thing between a billion gallons of water and Baxter City. I can't believe we fell for the old put-your-finger-in-the-dam trick. There's no tasting your way out of this one, taste lady. Ah, ah, ah. No smelling your way out of this one either, smell boy. Soon, uh, Baxter City will be nothing but young bass and old boots. And <laughs> everyone will blame you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see your bloated corpses down river. Oh, we're leaving? We have that thing with the Davises in 30 minutes. We do? You agreed to it. It's on the calendar on your phone. I, mean, I just thought that... Okay, I'm going. That's right. Run away, like the cowards you are! Oh, great strategy! Insult the supervillains! I don't smell you doing anything to save us. I don't see how being able to taste the difference between 60 kinds of cheese is going to help us. Well, smelling a snail from 200 yards away ain't exactly going to free us either. We're terrible superheroes. The worst. A lot of innocent people are going to die today. And I will smell every one of their deaths. Oh! 
Does that make you better than me? Uh, just saying. Health, Health Fair. Fair. Today on Health Fair, hot dogs, delicious snacks, or tubes of yucky cancer. My guest is Mr. Todd Frey, chairman of HADD. That can't be a real acronym. Ola, sexy. Everyone knows that hot dogs are unhealthy, and in a new study, chemists... Did you, did you say chemists or racists? I won't sit here and listen to you try to justify what racists say. Chemists found that hot dogs may contain DNA mutating compounds that might boost cancer risk. Hey, are, are you suggesting that we all live in a tissue box? Now, some studies suggest that mutating humans into mayflies could advance another open-mouth kissing to another level. What studies? I didn't think this show was about studies. I thought it was about how much hot dogs rule. Woohoo! Past research has linked hot dogs with colon cancer. Yeah, well, maybe these researchers should keep hot dogs out of their butts. <laughs> Easier said than done. Mr. Frey, surely you can't think that colon cancer is caused only when... Hey, hot dogs are as American as baseball and apple pie. Can you prove that baseball and apple pie cause cancer? Hot dogs rule! That was childish. No, you're childish. Mm. Ultra A word Shame. from one of our <laughs> fake sponsors, <laughs> Ultra, Ultra Shame 3. I used to love your face, but now your beard stubble makes me want to join a nunnery. Are you still using an old-fashioned razor to shave your face? Yeah. Your sloppy beard makes me hate you more than the arsonist who burned down the church. Oh, I, I get it. Do you like being a repulsive barbarian? I'm not being a repulsive barbarian. Uh, you are. Repulsive barbarian. Shaving with the razor equals barbarianism. Well, I mean, what the F is my option? Don't take that tone with him. I need help with my beard, man. The ultra Shame 3 shames the whiskers right off your face. Say what? The Ultra Shame 3 has conversations with your whiskers' parents, siblings, and ex-girlfriends to find out the things those whiskers really wish they could take back. Oh, okay, I'll... I'll try anything. Oh, it's working already. I'll translate exactly what the whisker mom is saying to her whisker son. Do you remember that time you ditched her anniversary party, which would have been the last time you saw your Aunt Ruth alive? You decided it was more important to get drunk with your friends and wound up in jail. Oh, my God. I mean, my, my, my beard is literally retracting into my face. I mean, it's, it's, it's like a, a, a eunuch's testicles at a Selena Gomez concert. And you know that cowardly stubble won't be poking its nasty self out anytime soon. <laughs> your, your face, it's so smooth. I could eat peaches off of it. I am so into that. Ultra Shame 3, move out of the dark ages of slicing your beard like a peasant's ear and into the age of being psychologically mean to that scruff. And it comes in a lady's style, too. The spit that thing says to your leg hairs is wicked. The stubble will be crying. Snuggletown Snuggle Deli, the, the ball. ball. Everyone ex is excited about the Snuggle Town Avenue Bull. Everyone, that is, except Hoppy the Grasshopper. Eppy the Honeybee discovers that the reason Hoppy doesn't like bulls is because he can't dance. And he had a weird experience at camp. Different episode. Did I give too much of the plot away? Those decorations are beautiful, Rita the Swallow. Thank you, Eppy, the honeybee. Birds know a lot about decoration. And that doesn't just include pooping on statues. Drop the attitude, Kenny the fish, who can live on land. Since when is stating the facts attitude? Since your mom's a whore.
Mm, that escalated fast. Fish whores are the worst. Let it go. Ooh, I'm looking forward to trying out the newest dance moves at the ball tonight. And I hear they flew in a four-star worm chef from the coast. Oh, it's terrific! Though I'm not sure my rudimentary digestive tract can handle worm. And I'm hoping there's water nearby in case the living on land thing becomes too much for my ever-evolving lung gills. <gasps> Has anyone seen Hoppy? I mean, the grasshopper? No! And I was saving a dance for him! Oh, me too! Oh, uh, me too! I mean, who knows which way that cat swings? I mean, I've never seen an ovipositor. Just means he's male. It doesn't necessarily rule out grasshopper bisexuality. Oh, can we just go one day without talking about grasshopper bisexuality? Hoppy the grasshopper hops slowly in. <coughs> oh, 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 this sure is a, a bad cough. I hope it's not contagious to anyone who might be around me at a dance. <coughs> Oh, no! Do you have a cold? Well, maybe. How do you think you caught it? Uh, a bunch of my co-workers have kids in daycare. I mean, do you think? Man, uh, it's hard to breathe on land uh, as a fish. And you're too sick to come to the dance. Uh, I hope not. I'm saving a dance for you. <laughs> so am I. And so am I. We didn't know for sure which way you swung. Uh, I'm flattered, Kenny, but nah. -uh. I'd hate to miss the dance where they have all those complicated dance moves. Uh, wait a minute, Hoppy. Are you really sick? Or afraid to go to the ball because you don't know how to dance? Uh, of course I know how to dance. The grasshopper thorax makes me great at dugging. Hoppy, do you know how to dance? You can be honest with us. We're a bird, a fish, and an insect. I don't know how to dance. I was embarrassed. Oh, Hoppy, you should know by now that you never have to be embarrassed around us. Yeah, we're your friends. We love you. Or the closest approximation of love creatures like us can manage. So will you go to the ball if we teach you how to dance? Sure. Hmm. Is that a yes or a no? Yes. Oh, Hooray! Hooray! I'll be right back. Where are you going? I'm jonesing for pollen. Bad! Oh, Epi! <laughs> <laughs> Addict. Uncle I'm Vic, Vic Job Hunt. <clears throat> You're sweating more than usual, Uncle Vic. The tequila waffle butter not setting well? No, that, that, that's not the problem. You're wearing a shirt with a collar. Funeral? Yeah, man, I wish. <laughs> I got a whole list of Emmer efforts that I want to laugh in their widows' faces and or have sex with their faces. Is this list, like, in a spreadsheet? No, a toilet paper roll. In my day, spreadsheet is what you did before you boned. I'm sweating so much because of my bathing infrequency, and I have to go on a job interview. Terms of your probation? Uh, bingo. Uh, what kind of job, Uncle Vic? Greeter. So you would be the first human customer C. Right. Is it a meth emporium? Tornado cleanup supplies? Something to do with crime scene cleanup. You know, it's been a while since, I, uh, since I've been on an interview. Any tips? Wear shoes and a shirt. I'm not going on Ellen. Do you want my advice or don't you? Uh, shoes and shirt. What else? Do you have a toothbrush? I lease one. Wear a shirt and shoes and brush your teeth. You want to do something about those hobo claw hand fingernails, too. I'll brush my teeth first and then chew them down. Uh, let's try a few interview questions. Um, tell me about yourself. Well, I invented the cotton gin. I introduced the concept of interchangeable parts for muskets. I invented a milling machine. That's Eli Whitney. But you made good eye contact and seemed pleasant when you were lying to me. Uh, where do you see yourself in five years? In bed with your mom. You're supposed to be responding to me as if I was interviewing you. Yeah, I was. I think we're done here, Uncle Vic. 
You think I'll get the job? It depends on how desperate they are. <laughs> I sense desperation, and then I turn on the charm. I'm sensing a little desperation now, Katie. Hey, hey, Katie, where are you going? Katie leaves. I guess she thought my charms were would be irresistible. Not even close. The urge to get away from you was irresistible. Irresistible. Party conversations. conversations. Hey. I'm an actor. Okay. Uh, di didn't ask. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you've probably seen me in a lot of things. I'm not even engaging in this conversation. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a specialist. I don't care. I'm a vomit specialist. What a disgusting specialty. Hey, vomit is natural. That's not really a pro-vomit argument. Uh, though there are a lot of vomit scenes in movies these days. Yeah, yeah. If you need someone to vomit in a movie, I'm your guy. I can assure you I never will. I've worked with all the big ones. You're answering questions I didn't ask. I'm anticipating them. I mean, hey, you know that lawyer who stands on the 18-wheeler? Kind of. Worked with him. There's no... Wait, but wait. There's no vomiting in those commercials. Hey, I don't ask questions. I just cash the checks. I haven't asked any questions either. I have a special mix I use for my vomit. Leaving. Hey, I'll friend you. Uh, overthink. overthink! All right, welcome to Overthink, the fast-paced new game show where every answer may be kind of right, but if you really study the question, it may just lead to a different answer. Welcome back our returning champion, Sierra McCoy. Hello, Mip. Hi, Sierra. Are you ready to play? I sure am, Mip. Good. I mean... I'm ready to play, but that's not a thing that I have all the all the answers or I'm in a a falcon like state of readiness, nor nor could I answer all of your questions as a falcon. <laughs> or that or that you could understand my falcon answers if if I did. Okay, our next contestant is Dale Herbert. Uh, I'm it. Big, uh, I'm a big fan of the show. All right. Well, thanks, Dale. Can you tell us a little about yourself? When you're saying can. Are you really meaning will? I mean, uh, of course I can, and of course I will. I, I'm, I'm done with you. Where there's a can, there's a will. Stop it. All right. I'm going to make a statement of introduction about our next guest. This is Morgan. She's ready to play. Hi, Mip. Now, our first question for 200 points. What color do you most often associate with the sky? Ten seconds. And, oh, blue. We were looking for blue. Oh, I was going to say that, but then I thought, well, that might depend on where you live. Or what or season it was. what season it was. Or the time of day. And that's <laughs> enough of that. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. That yeah. Was episode twelve. Do you feel That's like an a barbarian? <laughs> Quickly, let's give it up for our special guest star, April Hartman. Yay! Sager, what's your name? Cassidy is. Kennedy. Woohoo! Woo April, do you have anything you want to plug? Um. Uh, yeah. No, I don't. All right, Rob. Do you have anything <laughs> you want to plug? Uh, right Focus Sunday and Prepper November nineteenth, both at the Texas Theater. Cassidy, do you have anything you want to plug? Rack Focus Sunday, 2% Evil just made it into the Flash LA Film Festival. Super excited about that. If you're out in that area, it's going to be November 17th. And then also take a look at the Project Lookout coming soon. Cool. Also, Far Out Fiesta nice. will be hosting the Mary's Curry. In, into the microphone, Richard. That would help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Far Out Fiesta will be hosting the Mary Scary, I don't know what it's called. The but... Mary Scary Xmas 48 Hour <laughs> Film Festival yeah. held by the wonderful people at Demonic Chronic. Ooh, if you haven't hello. seen their stuff, check it out. You'll see nice. some of our regulars here and some crazy stuff if you go look at last year your stuff that is going well, to be what date uh the 12th of december december 12th thank you for asking come out and see us that will be the screen and i think they're doing the uh, the the film selection on december 2nd oh wow 
Rob. And we, and we may be there as well because we have, you know, 19, 18, 17 seconds here to fill, Richard. Yeah. So, you know. Oh, nice. The, I did that. <laughs> let me just 18, say that um, it sounded really bad when I said I didn't have anything to plug. Yeah. I have lots to plug, but I don't have time and I don't have dates. She's, so, boom. Nice. She's too That's bad ours. There you go. Go- Google bad Ars. April Don Hartman. <laughs> Google me. Are we out? We're out.